So this is the uh, intake plenum from the 2013 EcoBoost engine. It's it's actually a nice piece. It bolts directly to the heads, and the, the, the ports are all uh, all nicely contoured inside. Um, I'm sure the uh, the unit itself was designed a combination of FEA and, and CFD modeling. Uh, but a couple of challenges with the uh, the injection system, the direct injection on the EcoBoost. So problem number one. Uh, the uh, the high pressure fuel pump and the and the uh, fuel injection nozzles top out for flow around 500 uh, horsepower. So if you want to go a bit higher than that, you need uh, to spend a good deal of money to to replace all those units. Um, second, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, the uh, ECU to drive the high pressure uh, in, uh, direct injectors it's very expensive. And then third, uh, I don't really trust the plastic intake. If there's ever a backfire, the darn thing's just going to explode. And um, uh, the other problem is I, I don't think it's uh, really up to the task for higher boost pressures either, uh, anything much over 20 PSI. So I decided I was going to make the, uh, the replacement uh, out of uh, metal instead. So these are the steps I've, I've done to make that happen. So this is a lower intake manifold off, uh, I think it's a 2010 uh, Lincoln uh, V6. It's got, uh, it's set up for port injection. Um, I wanted to change over the uh, the EcoBoost to port because uh, the ECU to drive uh, the uh, the direct injectors uh, was going to be pretty darn expensive unless I bought the, uh, the Ford uh, street rod package. And uh, I want to go with the standalone ECU instead. Uh, it's more, more flexible for programming. So the um, the ports themselves actually lined up very well with the um, with the EcoBoost engine, but unfortunately the uh, the bolt pattern to bolt it onto the heads uh, was quite a bit different. None of the holes lined up. So I've uh, I've made these uh, these little inserts here. I'm going to weld them in place. Um, I've also having to change. There's a, uh, uh, a water jacket that goes across here for uh, for coolant. Um, it's not going to line up anymore. It, uh, the spacing was wrong on the ports. So that manifold, I'll, I'll remake the manifold and make an adapter to, to bolt down to the head. Anyway, uh, still early in the process, but uh, I've got a plan. So I've got those inserts all welded into the uh, the head um, to remachine the uh, the bolt pattern. Um, also the uh, uh, the packings that go in these grooves here to seal the manifold to the cylinder heads, um, they weren't going to line up properly on the on the cylinder heads, so I filled in those grooves with weld. There's, uh, and we'll have to machine it back. There's there's a lot of junk in the casting still. Uh, um, I don't know whether it's dirt from dirt and oils from uh, service or uh, or just other um, other debris, but uh, the welds aren't perfect, but they'll uh, they'll be okay. And I've already started blending the uh, the welds on the other side, so um, we'll, uh, we'll get it over on the mill and uh, clean it up and uh, do the next steps. So we're getting closer. I've uh, milled the weld smooth on the uh, and made the surfaces flat on the lower intake manifold. Uh, Redrilled the uh, the bolt pattern. Everything lined up fine. Uh, you can see down inside uh, the injectors uh, holes. I'm going to have to scallop out the um, the head on the EcoBoost engine to, to give clearance here for the injectors. Uh, so they spray into the port. Um, the ports themselves, um, you can't see it very well here, but they uh, they line up very well. There's probably about 20 thou mismatch. I'll have to blend that out, but uh, it's uh, overall uh, things are going well. Um, I still got to. Uh, Weld a flange on here and uh, and make a uh, a flange for that uh, that portion of the, the coolant crossover. But uh, everything's coming along. So the lower manifold's pretty much finished. Uh, a couple more uh, holes to drill on top, but that's it. Uh, and I've de-blasted it to clean it up. Uh, it looks much better. Uh, for that crossover for the coolant system, I decided to just. Reweld the uh, the existing piece back on, but shifted the whole thing about three quarters of an inch, so everything lines up now. Uh, that's going to work good. Uh, I did uh, blend the ports open in the top of the manifold just to uh, to make them uh, a little more uniform. And um, I've got the uh, the fuel rail here from the uh, the Lincoln engine. 
had to cut off the uh, the, the back of it here. Um, I'll weld some AM fittings on there uh, later, but uh, it was going to inter yeah, the shape of it, it was cross over here. It was going to interfere with the, the base plate for the plenum. So uh, next step, uh, I guess, is mocking up the plenum. And uh, I got a little bit of a challenge there with, with clearance to the bodywork, but uh, it's all going to fit. Just making this paper template. Uh, I want to put an O-ring in the, uh, the base of the plenum, the base plate. Um, so the pressurized side needs to be sealed from the atmosphere, obviously, um, but, uh, but it doesn't need to be sealed between the ports. So as you can see, uh, I've, I've traced this uh, paper template here. Um, it gets close in some spots to the, the uh, bolt holes and also the, uh, the space between the casting and the port. Uh, you know, the wall is only 3 8 thick, and i got to cut a uh, 3 16 inch groove through there for the O-ring. So just making this template up uh, should work okay. This is the base plate for the plenum. I'm just uh, roughing out the ports here on the uh, the mill. Um, you know, it's a conventional mill, so uh, ideally I'd have a CNC to, to, to cut this uh, O-ring groove. It turned out okay, though. Um, I'm going to put a 3 16 uh, silicone O-ring in there to seal things up. And, um, you know, I made the, uh, the base plate a little extra thick here because uh, uh, I need to blend the, uh, the, the the shape of the uh, the port here. I've got uh, I've got these stacks to uh, to be welded on here onto the base plate, and uh, I got to contour the port so that they match the, the ports in the head. Also, I cut uh, it's a half inch thick. I cut a uh, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I cut a rabbit groove in the uh, in the ends. That'll be for the uh, the side walls of the the plenum and a little extra support so it's not just relying on the weld under pressure. So I have the runners all machined up. Um, these uh, these bell mouse here, um, just bought them off eBay. Uh, they came out of China. They're 10 bucks a piece. I don't know how they make them for that. They're, they look like they're machined from precision machine from solid billet. Uh, anyway, the uh, the uh, the base plate's thick enough. Uh, I need to just Blend it uh, so the contour transitions from round to to the square port. The ports are pretty straight shot down into the uh, the cylinder. You can see the valve, so it's uh, it's going to be pretty good. Um, and the uh, the base of the uh, these uh, these runners, they don't need to be welded right around. I'll just put a couple of good solid welds on, but uh, the whole area is going to be pressurized, so it's not going to be a problem if there's any leakage there. So. Anyway, coming along. So I've got the runners uh, welded to the base plate. Uh, it's a shame all this is going to be enclosed inside the plenum because I kind of like the looks of the uh, the stacks. Uh, always a challenge when you're trying to join two pieces of aluminum that are dissimilar in thickness. So the uh, the tubes on the runners are uh, eighth wall, and the uh, the base plate's half inch. But uh, but the welds turned out okay. Uh, so all these vertical tubes here. Um, they're for actually bolting the, um, the plenum down to the upper manifold and also get some structure to the to the plenum, keep it from deforming under pressure. So that's the plan. And uh, as I said before, the uh, the shot down to the, the valves themselves is pretty much straight. You can see the valves down inside there. So it's uh, I like the design. So I got the main body of the plenum uh, bent up, uh, made it out of eighth wall aluminum. It was a little bit of a challenge. My sheet metal brake's not really up to the task, but I, I persevered. It took, uh, just took longer than, than expected to make it. Um, the, uh, the challenge with the design here, uh, I'm limited by, uh, by clearance to the top of the bed on the back, so uh, the, the top is a little bit lower than I, I would have liked. But uh, the overall volume is about 300 cubic inches which is one and a half times the uh, displacement of the engine. Uh, so that's, that's what's recommended. And I've got it uh, all welded uh, solid to the, um, to the base plate. And um, I, I talked about these, uh, these rabbits I cut in the, uh, the base plate here. So it's not just a weld holding it. The weld seemed to be the, uh, the weak spot on some of these plenums. So that's why I uh, elected to, to try and bend the main body up uh, out of one piece. So here I've got the plenum and the intake pretty much finished. 
a little bit more welding to do still. It's got twin 67 millimeter throttle bodies. So those are the, uh, the size off the original EcoBoost engine. There's about one millimeter clearance to the uh, to the top uh, panel on, on top of the bed. So it's uh, it's just made it. Uh, a little bit more welding to do still. I've got to mount uh, pressure and temperature sending units uh, on the plenum. And uh, one thing I'm undecided about, whether or not I'm going to put a burst panel on the plenum. I'm thinking if the throttle bodies are closed and there's a backfire, um, the blow-off valves aren't going to do anything to, to help uh, the, uh, the plenum, and uh, it's probably going to distort or, or burst. So. Anyway, uh, that's this project pretty much wrapped up. Next step, uh, mount the uh, the uh, the intercoolers down there, and uh, and I'll get all the charge piping together.